welcome to your watercolor for relaxation class. This is a class that I teach to adults and teens who want to build up their simple uh, watercolor techniques and also find a little bit of time to relax uh, during the uh, work week or even on the weekends. So if you ever get a chance, I encourage you to sign up for one of my online workshops or one of my in-person uh, socially distant classes. Today we're doing ornaments that are inspired by um, little holiday cards that I made this year. So ornaments I think are really fun because you get to learn to draw things that are round and also things that are three-dimensional. So for this project, you'll wanna have several different size circles as you can see, I like to tape off the edges of my card using washi tape. Um, I'm using a size that's a little bigger than five by seven, so I may, uh, I may just send it just like this, um, but you can do a five by seven or smaller for your watercolor card. Um, and we're gonna learn to draw and paint with watercolor three different ornaments that look kind of three-dimensional. I have this reference photo for inspiration, but I've also been doing a bunch of these. So you'll have your three circles, uh, small, medium, and large. And of course you can cluster like two together, but I want you to be kind of spontaneous and just sketch them in very lightly. Um, So not a lot of thinking is required for these. Just get the ornaments where you would like for them to go. I think this is a fun way to learn to paint forms. So you'll see I'm using my watercolor set and then I also have a Windsor and Newton travel set that I like to use. I have two round brushes um, and to start, I'm just gonna pick fun colors that I think would be nice for ornaments. You can go with any color you want, red or green. And when I draw these or when I paint these, I like to start to push pigment in toward the edge of the orb or the sphere. So get a little water. You're welcome to get your ornament kind of wet. And your goal here is, you don't want it too wet, but is to keep that color uh, kind of toward the edge of your piece. And you can do wet on wet or wet on dry with this. Um, the only thing that you may want to consider is, are there any really, really light areas where there's reflections? on your ornament, and of course there will be some twinkling lights or some other kind of reflections. So what I like to do is just keep an area really light. So I'll show you how to do that without sketching it. And then for the next one, we'll sketch our really light area. So to keep it really light, I just add water, and then I avoid that little orb where the light is hitting the ornament. Uh, a trick that I know is to dry off your brush completely and then suck up a little bit of water as you go. So you can dry it off and you can suck it up a little bit. Nice. And then again, you're just gonna push the paint over to the edge. I used a really, really bright red. I think you can mix some super pretty colors and darken it up a little bit. Okay. I use a similar technique when I'm painting planets, um, but I might want them to look more splotchy, so I might drip speckles in and things like that. For the ornament, I'm gonna keep it really simple really defined near the edges of the ornament. So trying to get that crisp edge. There we go, nice. All right, I'm gonna let that layer dry 
And while I do that, we can decide a little bit more about our composition. Do we want it to go vertical or do we want it to go oh yeah, horizontal card? I think either one can look nice. I think I'm gonna go vertical since my reference image is vertical. What I wanna do now is I want to sketch in some of the little areas where the ornament would attach to the branch. So I do two vertical lines and an arch. I can do a little hook or a loop. Um, I can do some one on each one here. You can go in later with a gold pencil or a, a metallic pen anything that you have to make it look really shiny and really cool. So I'll probably leave that for later and do that. And now is where I do my branches. Now this draws on my pine branch tutorial, so be sure to watch that after this. But I'm just gonna swoop through with some pine branches, some diagonal lines or some curved lines. And it just kind of provides a place that my ornaments will hang from. While that's drying, and I'm really happy with how that turned out, I can decide where I want the orbs to be, the, the little light uh, halos on my other ornaments. And I can sketch them as a reminder, or I can not. I like this one that's pretty solid, that's really dark here and then light here. So maybe I'll try something like that, like a shadowy effect on one. I like the gold. Um, all right. Time to pick up the round brush here and go for the next one. So or maybe a small, shiny, um, golden. And then I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with my last one. So these are my watercolor paints that are metallic. I got them on sale. Uh, but I believe that they're part of the Richeson brand. So I really like these. The gold is kind of shiny and thicker, so I might have to really push, again, pushing the paint around where I want it to be. My students hear me say that a lot. So I'm just guiding the paint where I want it to go. And of course, you can wet out your entire circle beforehand and the paint will actually follow that, or you cannot. And of course, I know I wanna have a darker area and a lighter area. So, I said I'll do a shadow in the middle. And for that shadow, I might tap in a tiny, tiny bit of metallic gray. The rule for shadows is they're always like at least two shades darker than the surface color. So you wanna start with the surface color and then you can try adding in ooh, a little gray and that should make a nice, ooh, beautiful metallic shadowy color there. And I think while it's wet, I'll just try tapping in that shadow shape onto the ornament. I'm happy with it. Nice, and then letting that dry. I want this part to get lighter, so again, I'm gonna take a slightly wet brush, a slightly dry brush, and I'm gonna soften that area just a tiny bit. Nice. So I get the nice reflections on the shadow, on the ornament, and it looks really natural. Okay, let that dry. I'll go for my last one. I think we're gonna do like a really pretty purple. I just wanna do something different. And I'm gonna teach you wet on wet now. So that's where we wet out the entire shape. And one thing I always like to tell my students is when you're painting, make sure you're breathing. So take a nice inhalation in through the nose. And then exhale really super duper nice and long. You wanna be relaxed when you're painting. I'm gonna get my purple going here from my, 
purple metallics. You see the difference when you're working wet on wet. The paint already starts to spread. It gives a really cool effect. Actually wouldn't mind putting in a little bit of darker blue. So we mix that in to make it a little less see-through. And then again, I'm pushing the paint right where I want it to go. And always, if you're wondering, you can start lighter and then you can go darker. It's very hard if you go dark and then you have to try to get it light again. So I always say start light, go dark, see where your paints are taking you. Okay. And now you'll see me just kind of quietly painting here for just a minute. Now you'll see me switching to a smaller brush. I'm gonna go in with my Sienna and my, um, my uh, Umber, and I'm gonna get a little bit of a darker brown. You can also do these with a golden ochre, whatever color you want the branches to be. You just need some nice thin branches for your pine needles. And of course, if you'd like to, you can make one end a little bit thicker. Move this reference photo. Kind of tilt my painting a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna be angling the brush. There we have it. There we go. And then Give that a second to dry, and I'm gonna start going in with the pine needle tutorial. This branch you barely see, it's just swooping very, very close lightly to the top. For the pine needles, you wanna use different natural shades of green. So your sap green, your yellow green is gonna be good for this your uh, darker green. Sometimes I put a dab of ochre in my green to make it look more natural when I'm painting. Again, I'm using a thin round brush. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but you'll see you can do short, short lines for your pine needles. My students really have fun with this, varying the lightness in the darkness of their pine needles. So if you get a few that are really, really light, you can go back in and you can make parts darker. The only thing that I do suggest is just keeping them kind of going in the same direction, like a feather, if you think of a feather, how parts of a feather kind of all go together. <laughs> that rhymed. I like using different greens though, I think that's fun. So have fun with it. Um, this is the part of the project that I think you can really meditate and you'll see that more in the Pine Branch tutorial. You can kind of really get quiet and meditate while you're doing it.
right so you'll see that I'm finishing up I'm working really kind of hard not to get the dark dark green too much on the ornaments I'm kind of just working on my lines I think this is like a great lesson to work on your line quality and your brush strokes which I'll have more lessons on brush stroke coming up in uh, January, so be sure to join me for those. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let it dry. So I've got some really light ones and some dark ones, which I'm happy with. And then I'm gonna go in with a silver or a gold paint pen. Um, yeah, kind of put my finishing touches on. I hope you really enjoyed painting with me today. And if you did, please like or subscribe to this um, artist designer. I'm actually an artist and a designer channel. And I also give yoga and meditation tutorials. So I would call it expressive arts <laughs> so anyway um, please like or subscribe to see more videos I appreciate you guys and uh, be sure to share your work with me thank you